big development at the countdown toward U.S. military action in Syria. Is a deal now possible? Did the Russians persuade Assad to turn over his chemical weapons? Even Congress now putting on the brakes. And moments ago, I sat down with President Obama, who seemed to be signaling the tough stand by the U.S. may have caused a dictator to back down. If Bashar al-Assad yields control of his chemical weapons to international authority. Are we back from the brink? Is military strike on pause? Absolutely, if in fact that happened. I don't think that we would have gotten to this point unless we had maintained a credible possibility of a military strike, and I don't think now's the time for us to let up on that. Uh, I want to make sure that that norm against use of chemical weapons is maintained. That's in our national security interests. If we can do that without a military strike, that is overwhelmingly my preference. And now the key is, can we uh, see with a sense of urgency. Urgency meaning how long does he have to show this is real? A week? A month? This is one of those situations where um, the stakes are high, but they're long term. They're not immediate. They're not imminent. Uh, but they are serious. I don't anticipate that you, you would see a succession of boats this week uh, or uh, you know, uh, any time uh, you know, in the immediate uh, future. And so I think there will be time during the course of the debates here in the United States for the international community, the Russians and the Syrians, to work with us to see is there a way to resolve this. But so I want to make sure that we weeks? don't take pressure off. I'm not going to put a particular time frame on. I think that we know what's at stake here. We know that the international community, even Assad's allies like Iran, uh, agree that uh, chemical weapons use is abhorrent. You still want Congress to vote authorization, and do you still reserve the right to strike if they say no? Strikes may be less effective if I don't have uh, congressional support uh, and if the American people don't recognize why we're doing this. So uh, I haven't made a final determination in terms of what next steps would be. My hope would be that I can persuade Congress that this is important. Uh, my hope is that I can persuade some of the American people that this is important. Uh, but uh, ultimately, I understand why a lot of Americans are resistant. I mean, I think the polls uh, are clear. I read them. This is not Iraq. This is not Afghanistan. This is not Libya. The goal would be to degrade the capacity of Assad to carry out these specific chemical weapons attacks. And Bashar al-Assad has said everything is possible in terms of retaliation. You should expect everything. You should expect everything. Do you feel at this moment looking at everything that's possible mm -hmm. that the American people should brace for retaliation? No. Uh, look, we take all precautions, but understand uh, Assad's capabilities are not significant compared to ours. They're significant compared to an opposition that uh, are not professional but fighters. they have they're, allies, they're, they're, Iran, they're, Hezbollah? They're, they're significant relative to 400 children that they gassed. They're not significant relative to us. Uh, Iran is not going to war with the United States over uh, the use of weapons that they themselves object to. But I think it is important for us to understand that if, in fact, the choice is between a world in which dictators and uh, other countries start believing it's acceptable to use chemical weapons on civilians and children, that will make it more dangerous for us. It means our troops, when they're in theater, all start having to wear gas masks. Uh, because they don't know whether or not chemical weapons would be used. If we can resolve this without military conflict, that is my great preference because uh, I have to tell you that I would much rather be talking about how we can uh, provide early childhood education to our kids and create more jobs and focus on all the things that uh, I really think the American people care deeply about. But as my, res my responsibility as Commander in Chief is to make sure that uh, I think about our long-term national security interests and the use of chemical weapons threatens that in a significant way. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate it, Diane. Thank you, Thank you so much. And our team is here right now, ABC's White House correspondent Jonathan Carl and ABC's global affairs correspondent Martha Raddatz, both here. And Martha, I'll begin with you. What a turn of events today. Someone said it's whiplash today. It's absolute whiplash for the president to say this is a potentially positive development that may deter military strikes 
put them off, saying to you, absolutely, it could put off military strikes. But when you look at it, his goal all along has been to deter any future chemical attacks in Syria. And if he can get some sort of breakthrough here with Syria, they don't have to strike. And they're going to stay on alert, nonetheless. They have to stay oh, on alert. Oh, military alert. forces are ready to go whenever the president gives the order, but we have to see if Congress votes on that to begin with. Well, what about that, Jonathan? Carl, it looks as if Congress is going to have a long time to decide now. Well, the Senate just announced a few minutes ago, Diane, that they're going to delay the vote, and it looks really bad for the president in terms of the votes, especially in the House. You know, they need 217 votes in the House to pass this. That's the magic number. And take a look at where our vote count puts it. Only 44 have said they are either yes or leaning yes. 241 members of the House saying that they are either no or leaning no. This looks really tough. Now, the Democrat, the, the White House still believes they could turn this around. You had 70 members of Congress down to the White House today. The president's going to meet with all 100 senators tomorrow. But this Russia development, a lot of members I'm hearing from are saying they hope this is a way out. Well, everybody has a chance, to, for the moment anyway, to look and see what the developments bring. Thank you, John. Thank you, Martha. And a reminder to everyone at home, the president is going to speak to the nation tomorrow night, and ABC News will be carrying it live.